All right, back for part two, the fun part. Uh, in part one, you saw that we, I pulled the table in, pulled in the temperature table, created some keys on both sides, and then created the relationships. And now we're ready to flip over to the Excel side on the report and see that it knows that the field list knows that the model's been modified. So I'll go ahead and update that and go to the temperature table, the newly added temperature table, and there's the average temp column. Go ahead and drag that to slicers vertical. And there it is. So we've got temperature data here. It's pretty granular. <laughs> but it is it is slicing the pivot table, which is what we were hoping for. Uh, but now we need to make it more useful. This is just this is obviously not very useful in this current form. So let's flip back to over here into the power pivot environment on the temperature table. And what we're going to do is create a column that reduces the granularity of the temperature. And you'll, you'll see this a lot. This is going to be a, a, a very commonly used power pivot technique, which is to go back to the power pivot window and create a less granular or alternate mapping for one field. And then you can use that, you know, that new mapping field back as a slicer or as a uh, on rows or columns of your of your report, and uh, I need to write a relatively complicated formula here that that assigns different temperature ranges to different <coughs> to different text labels, and I've already written that formula here in in Notepad, and uh, so I'd show it to you really quick. So I'm I'm just going to copy paste this formula in, but. For those of us who are, you know, for those of you out there who are not Excel pros, uh, I thought I'd break it out. I mean, the whole notion of this nested if is very familiar to Excel users, but just very briefly, if the average temperature is less than 40, I will assign it a value of cold. If it's between 40 and 55, I'll call it cool. Between 55 and 70, warm. And then everything else above 70 will just be called hot. So here it is. Copy that. Come over here. Paste it. There we have it. We'll rename it to be something like temp range. Okay, now let's flip back over to Excel again. And we'll have to refresh the field list because we added a field. And instead of average temperature, we will use the temperature range. Aha, uh -huh, that's, that's more like it. Is that? Let's see if that achieves the desired result. It is also slicing. So uh, we've gone from having nothing about temperature to having uh, a completely interactive report based on something that <laughs> seems relatively foreign when you first sit down to think about it, slicing sales by temperature. Um, and uh, did it all in less than 10 minutes. So nothing, uh, nothing fake about this. This is <laughs> this is exactly how you would do it uh, in the real world. And uh, I love it. I, uh, every time I do this demo, I'm, I'm always pretty excited about it. So um, there's one thing about this that uh, is not quite what I want yet. So you'll notice here that as I slice it, the numbers are reflecting it. But I don't really know if I'm selling better or worse in particular temperature ranges, because I might just have more cool days um, than I do cold days, for instance. And so this total sales amount is not, um, is not telling me quite enough. So in the next part, what I'm going to do is show, you know, for the first time, show some of the power of DAX when it comes to creating, you know, the DAX formula language lets me create measures in my pivot table or my pivot chart, whatever, that do some pretty amazing things. And so one of the things we're going to do is we're going to show, as a sort of the, our first step, we're going to create a measure that um, breaks sales out in terms of a sales per day sense. So then I can actually compare in a fair way the performance of my sales uh, in different temperature ranges. So look forward to that, and I'll see you soon for part three.